Hey guys, welcome back to the shop. So, this is a new update on the tank. What I've been working on, well actually what I'm pretty much finished with now is mounting the pump here. You can see I got it mounted on this bracket and everything. I just finished making this bracket. Got it bolted on there. Got the, this is double roller chain I have attached on there. And so this is basically it all together right now. I'm going to take all this apart right now and show you how it's all put together. Okay, so I got this taken apart right now. Um, I guess I'll start with this bracket here. Um, in the last video, I showed you this top plate here. I had made that and had the pump bolted onto there, all nice and solid. And then all I did after that was weld, I cut um, two pieces of this four inch I-beam. And as you can see, welded that onto here. I also cut off the the other half of this top part up here. Just not it wasn't really necessary to cut that off, but I just figured it looked better with that off. So I, I got rid of that. And then I drilled four holes. I think those are seven sixteenths bolt holes on four on each side. Gives a nice solid fixturing to the bottom. And um, pump bolts on there nice and solid turned out really well and so but with these on it was still a little bit too short so I just glued on these two um, these are just like wood com composite wood plates I just I just glued them on there I drilled the holes through and that gives me the extra I think half an inch or so of elevation that I needed to get these sprockets to line up correctly so so you can see in here that the shaft of the pump comes out and which is attached to this um, Lovejoy coupling. And the way these work is there's two halves, these two halves and a spacer on inside. And this spacer is rubber. It's pretty stiff rubber. You can see I'm, I'm bending it with my fingers here, but it, it's a pretty stiff rubber. This goes in between these two um, halves, these two like jaws on each side. And that's the coupling unit. The reason you would use something like this instead of just a straight solid piece of metal is because it reduces any, it accounts for any loose tolerances or misalignments you might have. Because I have, this, this is the shaft right here that's, um, that these sprockets are mounted on. And on the bottom there, there's a bearing, a four bolt flange bearing that's mounted onto the bottom of this board here. I'll show you in a second. And so just imagine that maybe that bearing and the shaft of the pump here were misaligned by two or three thousandths of an inch. It really doesn't sound like much, but the gears and components inside this pump are precise to probably a ten thousandth of an inch. So two thousandths of an inch of misalignment will be caught will cause vibration within the pump which reduces the life of the pump which is not a good thing by having this rubber thing it allows it to flex a little bit to account for any misalignments and reduce vibration so that's that um, and then over here we have the sprockets this is attached with series 60 double roller chain to the shaft of the engine. On here, these are 19th tooth sprockets and the engine has two 11 tooth sprockets. So that just gave me the correct gear reduction that I needed. It's not quite two to one, but it's, it's close. Um, if I can take this off, I guess I'll, I'll show you that bearing that I was talking about before. So that's down here. So you can see that bearing right there. And this is the shaft that comes through that's attached to the, the sprockets on the top. Um, you can see this is bolted on there with four carriage bolts. So the reason I use carriage bolts instead of regular bolts with um, a washer is because the regular bolts would be hitting this, this like bottom part of the sprockets. So the, the carriage bolts were low enough to clear that. And they worked really nicely too, so I'm happy with how that turned out. Um, the 
I made I made this was just like a piece of mild steel 5 8 inch shaft um, I milled in a keyway and weld I, that keyways welded in there um, because it was a little bit loose so I just welded it in there to be to be sure you can see back there too we have the sprockets on the engine um, those are on a one inch shaft as opposed to the 5 8 this is just made to match the pump um, so that's that. One problem I will have though, well one problem I do have is that for some reason it makes absolutely no sense to me, but the shaft of the pump is 5 eighths of an inch, but the keyway is 4 millimeters. I mean why, why would anyone do that? Like why would someone mix metric with regular? It, it doesn't make any sense to me. So because of that, the keyway on this um, coupler is is way too big. You can see how much it, it wobbles there. And that, that, that just won't work. It won't work. So I'm going to have to figure out somehow to cut a new keyway in here. You can see on these halves there's two set screws. One is at the keyway and another is just 90 degrees to it. So I'll probably figure out how to cut another keyway in there on this set screw so I can I can use that existing hole and so that's that's really the only issue I have with this now that's the only thing I have to do with it um, if you're doing something like this and want to know where you get these parts all I, all these parts I got here the sprockets the chain the um, the coupler the bearing on the bottom I got <laughs> I got them all from Rollerchainsforless.com. That's rollerchains the number four less.com. I, I came across that. I said this has to be the right place, and it was. They had everything on there. All they had a whole bunch of sprockets, all different bore sizes, all different um, size of roller chains, all kinds of different types of chains. Everything you would need, and so that worked out really well. That's pretty much it for the pump setup. Um. Uh, a couple other things I did, well, not really much else, but I I did mount, get around to finally mounting the hydraulic tank in there. You can see I just welded some nuts on the bottom there and used some all thread to kind of like put it on stilts. And that worked really well, nice and sturdy, so I can, it also allows me to adjust the height if I ever needed to. I'm probably going to keep it about this height, maybe lower it a little bit, but... That'll, that'll allow nice room on the top and bottom if I need hydraulic hoses to run under there or anything it'll give me plenty of room for that as well so yeah that's pretty much it for now um, like I said I still gotta finish up this hydraulic tank gotta weld up the weld the top on there um, and put a cap on there so I can actually fill it up and and then like I said cut the keyway in there and then just get hydraulic hoses you can see I've been, I've been working on lists of the different types of hoses I'm going to need and different lengths and stuff. And then, then pretty soon I'll get to figuring all that out. So yeah, that's it for now. Thanks for watching. See you next And if you're just coming across this channel, this is one video in a longer series showing the construction of my 30% scale ISU-152, a Soviet World War II era tank destroyer. And if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for more videos about the tank and other cool stuff.